So I went to quite literally the largest musical and audio convention in the entire world called NAM or North American Music Merchants. I already did an entire video of all the interesting things I saw there that are mic and audio related and that was part one. But this does not just fit in one video. I had to make a part two for it so you get a bonus video this week as well. So if you haven't already seen it, go check out part one and then here is all the other interesting things I think are worth checking out. All right. Uh, this is just a reminder that we just started a Discord. So if you're seeing this video and you didn't see the last video, or maybe you were unsure or forgot to join in the last video, go join now. I can't thank you enough for being just the kindest, wholesomest group of people I've met in the audio community. All right. I'll see you over there. I want to give a quick thank to our sponsor, Ridge Wallets, the one and only premier minimalist wallet brand. By now, you guys have already heard my thoughts on it. This is an amazing choice for a wallet that is sleek, stylish, and small, so it can fit in your front pocket super easily. It's RFID blocking, so you're not going to get your identity stolen. It's been really amazing for keeping the cards I need on me in a quick and easy accessible way, and it is just by far way less cumbersome. Not to mention, this is an amazing file. Father's Day gift. You know, Father's Day is just around the corner. They come in a bunch of really cool, awesome colors. Here's a scroll through all the different ones that you can find on their website. Anything from burnt titanium to gunmetal gray. They have all these amazing patterns. I have North Shore, which is a topographic map. They are genuinely built to an extremely high level of precision and quality. And I highly recommend if you're interested in this space, this minimalist sort of aesthetic, give these wallets a try. You're going to love them. If you'd like, you can use code AudioHaze for 15% off your purchase, or you can click the link down below. It'll just automatically take 15% off if you use that link. All right, back to the show. Okay, so Soyuz. This has always been a microphone I've wanted to review, namely because it is probably the most beautiful microphone I've ever seen. I've always said that visually, microphones play a pretty large role nowadays because oftentimes they're on camera. I'm kind of associated with this microphone because of how heavy of a stance I've placed on it when compared to like an SM7B. The RE20 is kind kind of associated with my brand. Soyuz has produced unequivocally some of the most beautiful microphones and in my opinion, the most beautiful microphone at the show, the Bomblet. So let's hear their thought process behind the design of this microphone and how they think it sounds. Hey everyone, this is Mark from Soyuz Microphones here at NAMM 2022. And today we're going to be talking about our microphone, the Bomblet. If you're not familiar with Soyuz Microphones, we make everything completely by hand, hand machined bodies, so from solid brass and aluminum microphone companies that machine our own capsules. Everything is a completely original design and our philosophy kind of follows the pursuit of the golden age of microphone making. So in the 60s and 70s, so all our microphones air on the darker side of condensers. We use transformers in all of our mics and the consistency is very rich and full body. So specifically the Boblin, this is based on our interpretation of a Lomo microphone capsule. Lomo was a Russian brand in the 70s, uh, not very well known, so we found one of their capsules and we were inspired by the sound to make our own modifications. The result is a very dark and low mid forward condenser that sounds a bit like a ribbon microphone. People absolutely love these on percussion, outside of kick drum, and uh, more frequently guitar amps. We kind of tout this as our workhorse mic. It's really easy to throw and go consistent sounds and really anything you need, a nice finished dark sound. With. So what is the process behind designing a microphone like this? Because this is a beautiful mic. Yeah, so the inspiration behind the design philosophy follows the golden ratio. And since we are based in Russia where we machine everything, it's kind of inspired by the classic architecture and the domes of the churches and cathedrals. And just kind of taking that philosophy towards microphones. And also, when every other microphone has followed the same visual approach for decades, we wanted to try something different. And yeah, maybe some people will say it's surface level, but if you are singing in front of this, it will inspire a bit of, a bit of magic. Yeah, absolutely. Next, we're going to move to cloud. And you guys know my take on the cloud lifter. I think it's really a cool innovation and a cool product. And I think maybe my words in the past were misconstrued to say I don't like or I don't approve of the cloud lifter, which is not the case. I just think it's sold as a necessity for the SM7B when it's not necessarily a necessity. But check out this cloud lifter. This one I would buy. Except it has variable impedance. 
So what that lets you do is different mics have different impedance loading, so you can match it to what like the manufacturer wants it to be, right. or you can mismatch it and it'll change the tone of the mic. So you can be creative with it as well. You can have it the way the mic is intended to sound, or you can mismatch the impedance, and you might get a little heavier sound, you might get a little thinner sound, depending on the filter. Then it has a high pass filter and variable gain, so you can have two different levels of gain on the output. The Cloudlifter Z is something different and something I think that is really unique. It offers a number of different variable impedances to match the impedance of your microphone or change it to change the tone of your microphone. So it's a creative tool just as much as it has like a utilitarian purpose. If I were going to get a Cloudlifter, it would be that one. So let's talk about not microphones. We're going to talk about Odyssey, which is an audiophile headphone brand. I had a pretty interesting conversation with them about the differences between audiophile headphones and music production headphones. And this is because they're releasing the MM500, which is a pretty upscale studio production headphone. And they're pretty typically in the audiophile space. So let's hear what Odyssey has to say about the differences between production headphones and what they're good for, what they need versus audiophile headphones. What is the differences between audio file culture and producer culture because to me it always seems like there's a little bit of a artificial fabrication between the two and I was wondering mm. if some of that translates to product design or do you see a distinct difference in how you design a production headphone versus an audiophile headphone? Hmm. Well, there, there, there's a few questions there, so let me start teasing that out. Sure. Uh, so as far as the culture difference, I think there's definitely a difference in terms of what folks are looking to do with their sounds. So uh, there are a lot of audiophiles who look at uh, the, the way their system sounds uh, as something that uh, is, is very much endemic to the products they put in the chain. So everything down to the cables, power cables even, are important and you know might be little tweaks on the sound. And some of these tweaks uh, are things that a pro might accomplish uh, just by using EQ or by using other tools that transform the sound without having to swap through you know 50 different DACs or amps or that kind of thing to get their sound optimal. Uh, so I think pros are a bit more pragmatic in how they uh, how they approach uh, sound overall. Now, as far as how that manifests itself in the difference of products, well, I think in audiophile products, you see a much broader spectrum of sound signatures. So you see things that are super warm and tuby, or you see things that are really bassy, or things that are really bright and open and airy sounding. Uh, there's a wide variety, whereas I think professional products tend to uh, hew themselves more closely to a studio flat neutral sound so that folks can go from one product to another and you know, know that the sound is going to be consistent. Uh, so in general, I would say that when you're designing for a, a studio professional product, you want to make it as close to a neutral reference, you know, high quality speakers in a well dampened room as possible. And that was our uh, our uh, goal with the MM500, the, the new headphone that uh, we just demoed here uh, for the first time at NAMM, uh, which we developed in collaboration with the uh, 11 time Grammy award winning mixer uh, Manny Marikeen. Lastly, because we don't want this to get too long, let's Let's talk about Roswell Pro Audio, which is a, a company I really think you should check out if you're looking for probably the best bang for your buck of the whole show. If you're familiar with recordinghacks.com and microphoneparts.com, then you know that Matt McGlynn is probably one of the nerdiest audio nerds out there. His knowledge on DIY gear puts him in a really unique space in the microphone world. Microphoneparts.com started off as like a kit company and it still is a kit company where you solder the microphone yourself, they give you the components and the result is an extremely high quality microphone at a price point that is much more affordable. Okay, well let's hear what Matt had to say about how we started Roswell Pro Audio. So my first gear company in this industry uh, is a company called Microparts or microphoneparts.com. So if you like to solder, check out Microparts because uh, we sell microphone kits. So you get a printed circuit board and a bag of components and a capsule and we do all the hard work for you in terms of matching components and uh, biasing JFETs and voicing capsules and all of that stuff. When we started that company, it was, it was more, much more popular than I expected it to be. And a lot of people were asking me to build the mic for them. They wanted me to build the mic. They said, look, I'm sold on the concept. I want, I want the mic your kit builds. I don't know how to solder. Can you build it for me? And I said, no, we don't do that. But I can think 
of a company that, that could do that, and that's where Roswell Paradio came from. So the idea of Roswell Paradio was, let's figure out a way to economically make microphones that take the benefits of all of these DIY kits into a commercial product that you don't have to build, which is, I know, a weird disclaimer to make about a microphone, because most microphones you don't have to build except <laughs> for microphones. So you have a microphone that's wired up in California with parts that are competing with microphones that are triple the price point, using time-tested circuitries and modifying them to work in a modern context, and the result is a $300 to $400 microphone that is competing at a microphone level that is triple its price. I asked him to walk us through some of the more bedroom studio friendly microphones so you could take a look at them yourself. So, Roswell Pro Audio makes uh, six different microphones and what I'll talk about is the Mini K-Line. The, the word Mini literally just means small uh, in this context. And these are all large diaphragm condensers. They're not small diaphragm condensers or medium. They're true large diaphragm 34 millimeter capsule. We have uh, three or four of them depending on how you count. One of those is the kick drum mic. So I'll leave that one out for now. But we started with the Mini K47. So this is a transformerless circuit uh, with a K47 style capsule. And people love this on everything from drum overheads to guitar caps to vocals. Uh, it has a presence bump around four kilohertz. That's the sound of the capsule, K47 style capsule. And that helps guitars and voices cut through a mix. And the mic comes with what we call the cutaway shock mount. As you can see, the front is, is cut away, which allows you to position the mic up close to a guitar cabinet. Or if you're doing voice work, you know, you don't have a bunch of uh, shock mount metal work poking you in the chin if you wanted to work the mic close on a, on a voice. So the next one we made in this Mini K series is the Mini K87. And these numbers are references to, really, the capsule voicing. So some people want to think that this is a U87 clone, and it's not, but we do use a U87 style capsule. Now the capsule the U87, for those who are really into the nerdy side of microphones, uh, and by the way, I've got you, because I am too, um, the capsule in that mic was actually called the K67. Uh, so we kind of made up the K87 name, because the capsule in this mic has a flatter frequency response, uh, which means we need to do less EQ work in the circuit, which means you end up with a very smooth sounding mic with more air on top. So both of these, the 47 and 87, are both transformerless. And the price points are low, so $349 on the 47, $399 on the Mini K87. And then the brand new mic that we're launching this month is called the Mini K67X. So what's different is the X, which stands for transformer. So unlike the other two models, this one has a different circuit in it with a large output transformer. That circuit, in combination with the transformer, gives you some harmonic saturation, specifically uh, even order or second order harmonics, which adds a richness of tone to your source. You know, one word that's used for that effect is warmth. You know, a microphone that sounds warm often has some saturation built in. This is new, and it's uh, selling for $4.79. And that is the Mini K product line. So these are, you know, I thought of these as, as like the perfect singer-songwriter mic, the perfect home studio mic. But we've really been blessed by some popular producers uh, who use these in big studios. Okay, so it was a complete honor to go to this thing. I've been watching Nam since I was a kid, and to finally be there in person was absolutely surreal. Let me know what you would like to see on the channel, any of these that you would want to see in a review, any demonstrations, any cool videos we can make with any of this gear, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>